However, at, because of the terrain that we're flying in, if we did have to eject out in the airspace, once you're separated from the aircraft, Hey guys, Casey here again from Genius Garage continuing this series from my time with the Thunderbirds. Today's video is going to be the uncut brief with the pilot, followed by a brief in a mock cockpit where we go over everything relating to the flight. A lot of information very quickly for somebody who isn't actually a military pilot, just a wannabe like all of us other dreamers. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this dream shot and it's going to be a fun series. Objective is to be safe today, and we're going to do that by good open communication between the two of us. So you can call me Seven, you can call me Miami, you can call me Eric, whatever you want to do while we're in the jets, fine. Uh, and then is Casey okay? Absolutely. All right, and then uh, good open communication between the two of us, and then uh, our second priority, of course, is to have fun. Yeah. And we'll do that by scaling the profile, doing what we can do, make sure you have a chance to fly the airplane, Fantastic. getting our good brief uh, out of the way here. Um, do you have flying experience then I do. as well? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'd actually, they have my pilot's license right now, but I spend okay. so much time racing and stuff, yeah, so yeah. I just go hooning around with people in various things. Oh, good. All right. Well, so. uh, like, when I tell you airspeed and altitude stuff, it'll all uh, make sense. I could pass the written right now. Okay. Yeah. All right. You can fly us out there and fly us back. Yeah, I don't know about And that. do all the maneuvers. <laughs> so that'll be good. Maybe for like a Cessna. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, you could, you'll be surprised me. at how easy this is, yes. especially with the heads-up display in the front, it's mm -hmm. super easy airplane to fly, but super in the back, and you in. can uh, and you'd be impressed how uh, how reactive the, the stick is, um, given that it doesn't even really move. Yes. Which is pretty cool. So we'll talk through our ground operations. We'll talk about the flight overview and the profile. We'll go jump in our little trainer out okay. there to talk through a few things. We'll talk about some abnormal procedures uh, probably while we're out there as well. And then uh, we'll set our time for when we want to um, jiggy on out to the airplane since we're doing pretty well. Uh, overall what time do you have? Uh, I've got 11.34. And same. 27, 28, 29, 30. I literally have the same. All That's right. odd. Okay, <laughs> yeah. we're on. Good. Uh, this is a Verizon network hack. That's all I got. <laughs> Mine's a bunch of springs. Yeah, it's doing well then. For uh, our ground ops, ramp safety is paramount when we're out there. You, I think you probably spent a lot of time out there yesterday. Yes, yes, I was yes. out in our practice range, so. We understand the entry there. area into yep. the area. Great. So yeah, we'll walk, walk around, around the red line. We want to make sure we bring back everything we take out. Of course. Uh, prevent the FOD. Uh, hazard out there and then uh, once we get out to the jet uh, all the maintainers will be lined up I'll just have you jump single file behind me mm -hmm. and then uh, I'll salute everyone and then we'll give them low fives we call yeah. that the shake and bake I don't know if you saw that during one of the <laughs> steps yesterday so you get to be yeah, part of that fives, yeah just a good chance to get the morale going and look everybody in the eye before we uh, strap on the airplane Dude. then once we get out to the airplane you'll get your uh, you already have your juice suit on you'll get your harness on and then uh, they'll have you climb up in and be ready to rock. Uh, the crew chief will double check you in the airplane. Mm -hmm. One of the AFE troops will uh, triple check you, and then I'll get up there for Indeed. the last, sure uh, last laugh round. Laugh out some things are proper in right. oxygen going. We should have the right distance to the canopy, etc. Yep. Yeah, that we won't be able to do until we get the airplane turned Good on point. and you've got power yeah. on that. But everything else they'll double check you on. And then when I get up there, uh, I'll, we'll just do a quick reorientation of mm -hmm. the cockpit. We'll practice like arming and dearming the seat. And then I'll have you put your earplugs on, put your helmet on, mm -hmm. practice putting your mask on and off, yes. visor down and up. Big thing with the visor is to make sure it's you pretty, just, it's like just, a welding helmet. Yep, just loosen it a little, little bit, yeah. not to lose the, the nut on that, uh, or over tighten it and have everything Correct. Uh, spring out. And then, um, uh, then you can leave your mask down. It'll be a little bit hard to breathe because you're breathing from the backup oxygen that, yeah. system in there. So you can leave your mask down, and then once I get in the front seat strapped in and we mm -hmm. have comms, that at that point I'll tell you, okay, Casey, go ahead, put your mask up, visor down, gloves on. And then while you're doing that, I'll be starting up the airplane and the canopy will be coming down. So big thing, while the canopy is up, make sure you keep your arms and hands inside and Correct. clear of the rails. And then especially while that's moving, keep your arms and hands clear. Once the canopy is down, there's two little racks that you'll see right here we mm -hmm. call them the towel rack then you can once once the canopy is down and locked you can rest your arms mm -hmm. on that you can hold on to those rails it's comfortable back there and I'll tell you which maneuvers today I think is better for you to hold on to that versus an open palm so as not to get in the way of the stick uh, yeah just so that like mostly are inverted and mm -hmm. rolling type stuff where it actually will help you stay in the seat understand uh, during that part we're pretty good on uh, lateral juice just from racing yeah yeah so hopefully be helpful maybe yeah and and we've had a good a good run with with all the drivers we've been able to yeah. 
yeah. to fly. So you got the two NASCAR so. drivers out uh, a couple weeks ago yep. at Daytona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, and they both uh, they both ended up doing well until the big one. You know, two yeah. laps to go, and they got. Oh, I heard uh, that. Yeah, you're right. All caught up in that, but it was fun. And those guys get it, and it's it's pretty cool to to share it with them. So I'm um, uh, looking for the same from you today. So oh, I, no I, pressure. I, no pressure. No, hey, look, <laughs> I come here. It's like all right. All I have to do is not screw up anything, <laughs> communicate well, deal with myself, and then if that's going well, try to get into the cool stuff. Uh, there we go. That's it. That's pretty much it. While having fun. Uh, cool. So we'll get uh, all the pre-fly stuff like we just talked about accomplished, and then um, we'll talk through a couple of these other things later. Great. All right. So for the actual flight overview, so our baseline contract today, Casey, will go something like this. So I'll say, okay, Casey, get ready. Mm -hmm. That's just your, your warning that something's about to happen. Okay. Not that we're going to pull crazy G's or do right. anything like that, but that means I need your attention. That means let me know if you're not ready. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're like, hold on, my mask is down or hold on, my phone is out or something you like that. You just want a simple thing like clear or ready? Uh, you know, no news is good news. So Understood. as long as you're ready to go, nothing. But if you're not ready, like, mm -hmm. oh, hold on, Miami, I just need a second. One moment. Or yeah. this, isn't, this doesn't look right or whatever, whatever you want to say. Um, there you can jump in. Uh, and then that also means get into your good body position yes. like we talked about. So everything Doc told you in preparation for G is good for any type of maneuver we're mm -hmm. going to do. Um, so your, your arms and hands either just... Uh, relaxed in your lap is mm -hmm. fine or I'll tell you when holding on to the rails Understood. is a little bit more comfortable That's better for high roll rate type stuff. Yep roll rate stuff because then prevents you from bouncing your nugget <laughs> off the canopy And when we're inverted it might kind of just help you stay a little bit more stabilized Understood. and things like that um, But into a good seating position you can keep your head up uh, until we start to pull G if you want Otherwise it's just easier to just put just your head back, back mm -hmm. against the the seat rest or the headrest That's fine too probably Understood. more comfortable that way uh, and then the next thing you'll hear from me is here comes the, and then whatever we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So here comes the roll. Here comes the knife edge. Here comes inverted, inverted. Do so, you go on the beat of the last word or the beat after the last word? Of the uh, for those, it's not really pacing necessarily. Yeah. I'll just say here comes the whatever we're going to do. Understood. But if we are going to pull some G's, then what you hear me say is, okay, Casey, get ready. Mm -hmm. All right, good squeeze, good breath. Here comes the G. Mm -hmm. So when I say good squeeze, that's a reminder to start squeezing Five, from your core. lower body. Yes. Yep, all the way to the core. Try to maintain a good relaxed upper body. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say good breath, but don't take a breath right there. That's mm -hmm. just a reminder. Uh, and then I'll say good squeeze, good breath. Here comes the G. Understood. And then on G, then we'll both go... Got and it. take the good preparatory breath there. So and as that's you, building up just to get into the rhythm of it. Yep, for the rest exactly. Of the yeah, and then so I can finish talking before I start doing the the G part too. So here comes the G. We'll both take that good breath, mm -hmm. lock it off, and then uh, and then you'll feel me start getting into yes. the pull at that point. Then once we get on top of the G, once you feel the G force, then we'll start the three second air exchange. So common tendency there is to breathe fast, right? So I believe go, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so three seconds is a long time. Especially it is a very energy. long time. If you just mimic what I'm doing, uh, you're probably going to be pretty close. Okay. If you hear me in the radio, but we just get that good breath. And just good air exchanges there. So as you learned, you did that, a little bit more of a release before your refill. Yep. Okay. Yep. So the the tendency is to you know, f well, well, you want to fight the tendency mm -hmm. to have a big air dump because the first time you open up, the G will your diaphragm just comes. Yeah, the G will push on you. And you go. <laughs> and then you'll be, you know, tough at that point to get air back in. Yeah. So the quick, uh, forceful uh, exhale and then a good forceful inhale fighting okay. against the G. And that's all contingent upon the good preparatory breath at the beginning, which mm -hmm. is what's going to carry most of your oxygen through the maneuver. Uh, when we get out to the airspace, we'll do a, a couple of practice turns yes. uh, so that you can kind of get the routine and be comfortable with the mm -hmm. G's and in that environment. Uh, and then we'll talk through like, okay, that was good. How you feel? You know, a little faster, a little slower. Yeah. Most of the G loading that we'll be at today, you just need to be an active participant in some portion of, of the G strain because we'll, we'll be mostly around six G's mm -hmm. until we get uh, towards the end in some of our max turn type maneuvers where we'll be a little bit higher. All right. Uh, talk through all that when we do get a chance to transfer aircraft control it'll be positive and confirmatory so I'll say okay Casey so you can put your left hand on the throttle mm -hmm. right hand on the stick you have the aircraft and mm -hmm. then just respond I have the aircraft Understood. and then when I take the aircraft back I'll say okay Casey so I have the aircraft and you just say you have the aircraft just to confirm. what would be good something good for me to do with it or not do with it at that point? Uh, we'll talk through it there you can just at first just kind of mm -hmm. practice uh, just like 
roll to the left, it's a little like bit of turn, a little bit of roll. Just yeah. Subtle lazy find a turn, hold an yeah. altitude. Yeah, just level, like practice level flight, a level mm -hmm. turn, because when we're going out there, we'll be VFR, but yes. uh, we'll need to, we'll have to stay outside of, you know, below 180. I understand. Uh, and then um, well, we've got a little bit of room, we can mess around there. And okay. then once we get in the, in the airspace, you can basically do whatever you want. Cool. So you can, we'll get you through some aileron rolls, a loop, uh, uh, whatever flying you want to do. Definitely. Uh, while we're out there. I heard we might be able to get out by the Death Valley Canyon and whatnot. We will be, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful terrain out there. So we'll be in California, just north of Death Valley. Yes. Uh, National Park itself. Fantastic. Uh, My and wife and I visited there recently. All right, great. Yeah. yeah, so not too far from the China Lake area yeah. uh, out there, and then we'll, we've got a practice sit area we call Dogbone Lake. We'll work that area. We'll do what they call Star Wars Canyon. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you've heard about that. I've seen it. Uh, from west yeah. to east. Uh, and then we'll get a little bit of low-level flying, and then we'll get through uh, the 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 demonstration maneuvers um, that the solos do okay. and then a couple that the diamond would do uh, throughout the demonstration understood so initially it's getting oriented to just being there acclimating yep. getting out to the airspace um, so basic maneuvers in that regard uh, potentially having the opportunity to fly the plane get in there uh, beyond that some of the low level flying some interesting stuff with mm -hmm. you and then uh, standard uh, more air show maneuvers and stuff. That's right. And then when we get to those maneuvers, we'll start with our takeoff maneuver. Okay. Uh, so this was, is probably going to be one of the more fun uh, highlights of the mm -hmm. day because uh, you have really have no idea what to expect when we get there. So in in this uh, um, version and loading configuration of the F-16, we're, we're about as light as weight as we can be uh -huh. with the, the most powerful engine because that you burned we up have. Fuel toward the end of the run with this? Uh, no, this is right off the bat. Okay, First right thing, off the bat. Yeah, just, just in general, our configuration. Okay. We don't have big wing tanks. We have our one center line. Right, tank, because you, you guys carry the uh, belly tank for the two-seater because it takes up some of the fuel cell room. Exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. We lose 1,300 pounds of gas because of the person in the back seat. Yeah, so gotcha. we need the extra tank to give us a little bit more. So we actually end up about plus 600 over. Mm -hmm. A normal jet uh, with marginal increase in drag uh, from the centerline tank. But anyway, pretty high performance airplane in the configuration we have. No bombs, no other big heavy things That's hanging. Clean. So uh, we will uh, select max afterburner, we will release the brakes, and we'll be off the ground in less mm -hmm. than 2,000 feet. And then we'll be cruising down the runway. I'll call off the air speeds that you'll hear there 250, 300, yes, 350. Uh, so accelerating pretty quickly. And then at the end of the runway, you'll hear me say, okay, Casey, get ready. Good squeeze, good breath. Here comes the G. Mm -hmm. We'll pull up about four to five Gs into the near vertical, and we'll gain about ten to twelve thousand feet in about ten Fantastic. to fifteen seconds. So pretty fun there. <laughs> Take a look outside. And, yeah, uh, it feels like you're riding a rocket ship. And then as I approach my good. altitude uh, cutoff, mm -hmm. you hear me say, "Here comes the second pull." Understood. All right. So just it won't be crazy G or anything, but just so you're not Talking like three taking or four. it back. Yeah, Understood. by that one. Er, I gotta level us mm -hmm. off. Uh, under 16,000 feet, and then we'll cruise So it's on effectively a really long Immelman. Uh, yes, kind of. Okay. Yeah, it won't be straight up over. It'll right. be kind of in the oblique yeah. over here. Oh, you uh, uh, you roll to come over 90 yeah. to get out of airspace? Through yep, to, yeah, and we just point to our McCarran. clearance okay. point at that point. Yep, uh, not to, to be a factor to any of those guys. Uh, and then it's about an 8 to 10 minute drive out to the airspace. So on the way out there, once we get leveled off, I'll do some radio checks, uh, some uh, operations checks with the jet, make sure everything's good to go. Uh, and then once we're VFR and clear of all the factor airspace, then I'll let you just fly us out there, basically, which awesome. is nothing other than just kind of pointing straight. We can practice the turn. Sure. Just once, and then once we get in the airspace, then I'll do our practice uh, G warm-up and G awareness maneuver. So that's just going to be two 90-degree turns. Four to five G on the first, which will feel just like our takeoff maneuver. Five to six G on the second to get up a little bit higher, see how you feel on that one. And then I'll let you take the jet back again and do some awesome. maneuver from there. Yeah. After that, I'll take it back, we'll do the low level flying, we'll pop back up, and then I'll get into the maneuver sequence. So some of the maneuvers we'll execute today, first is gonna be a knife edge. Yes. All right, so I'll get the airplane right up Getting 90 degrees on its side. Altitude. Yep, exactly, yeah. yeah. So you'll feel me, you'll feel me kick the rudder mm -hmm. uh, with the bigger canopy and the tank on the D model, we get decent lift on the side. I was gonna here. think, can you climb up? So, you can climb on Yep, a, we can yeah. actually climb, climb when we're sideways on that. Uh, and then you know, the jet is gonna want, the flight control computer always wants to seek 1G. Mm -hmm. So it would it would 
get us into a turn. So you'll feel me push forward on the stick to zero G to have us do an actual straight track across the ground. Yes. That's what you can expect there. Then uh, you'll have done um, some aileron rolls for us. If we get a chance to do a couple more, I'll show you a little bit more of like a max rate. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do that, is there a need to get the nose up slightly before you land? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So what, what I'll have you do is pull the nose up to about seven and a half degrees. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure we're above 400 knots and above 5,000 feet AGL sure. uh, for our minimums there. And then you'll just turn and just dead on the arm roll. Right. Yep, yep. Okay. And then once the nose up attitude slightly, do you need back pressure on the stick? No, no, nope, okay. not at all. So back stick pressure to get the nose up, release the back stick pressure, and then just an in plane roll. When left. you fly air shows and you're doing uh, very precise rolls, uh, is there much or any adverse yaw with a roll that you have to kick in rudders? Uh, no. So it's it's all connected and controlled. I see. So it will coordinate the roll automatically yes. in the flight control. So we don't have to add any rudder. It's pretty good dart. <laughs> Yeah, they will add rudder. Uh, you know, I, I'm the ground the ground safety observer during the demo, so yes. I just get to watch them and be like, wow, they're really good at what they're doing. Um, they will uh, they'll use a little bit of yaw because mm -hmm. of formation considerations. How staying in? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Not not. I, I've so, seen I have seen them tracking yep. left and right. Mm -hmm. Not so much just for a coordinated roll, but because right. they're they're just flying a formation reference and maintaining you know, distance. Main, yeah, to their, doing what yeah. they need to do. So they'll use a little bit of uh, of rudder for that. Um, as well as use that as their safety out if mm -hmm. required uh, on that one. Um, some other maneuvers, aileron roll like we talked about, uh, we'll do a four point, one, two, three, four, same thing, it's a ballistic style maneuver, so we'll yes. just get the nose up, and then again, no back stick pressure, we just crank each of those uh, four spots. We'll do a slow roll, so the same thing, an aileron roll, when you but come, now. When you come out to hit your point on the four yep. point, do you give any back pressure on it to stop it quick, or do you literally no, just off just and it stop. stops? You just stop. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you'd actually over control it and, you'd be all and go back a little okay. bit. You'd shake a little bit if you if you stopped it. But yeah, their mech for that, they actually just use an open hand to just, prevent. They just pop it at the time. Yep. yep. Difference One, I need. Two, three, four. Mm -hmm. We'll do the slow roll. So same thing. Aileron roll, very slow, uh, mm -hmm. trying to keep the nose uh, close to level throughout this whole maneuver. Um, so unlike the other ones, this one's not ballistic, where you jack the nose up and then let it fall throughout. Yes. You try to actually keep it straight, straight level, uh, yeah. and level throughout the maneuver. Now, if that requires, does that require coordination, especially when you go to inverted yes. forward stick? Yep, exactly. Yep. But no rudder on that when you guys coordinate. Uh, rudder, rudder. So you are coordinating yeah, it when yep, you're doing yep. straight level. This one you will because you're trying to maintain the jet. Will wouldn't maintain perfectly level flight through that. Mm -hmm. It would just maintain an actual like aerodynamically coordinate, coordinated roll uh, through that, not necessarily level. Yep, so they'll do that. Uh, we'll practice the slow roll. Um, and then the last for our roll sequence, which we'll probably do at the end, will be inverted to inverted. So okay. they'll turn us upside down. Mm -hmm. You'll feel me push to zero G, then negative one G to mm -hmm. maintain uh, level flight while we're upside down. We'll be hanging uh, from the straps there with some good pressure. If anything were to fall out uh, of the jet right here and land on the canopy, mm -hmm. just let me know. I will let you know. Uh, hold on, Miami. There's a, a chart or something right here. Grab it, Understood. and then we'll turn back over, secure that, and then hopefully start the process again. But let me know and make sure we grab it before we turn back over. Uh, and then once we're established here, having a good time, you'll hear me say, and roll. We'll roll from inverted back to inverted. Uh, stick that there and then we'll recover on out uh, from that one. So that'll be towards the end. It's a pretty fun one. We'll do a uh, standard loop sequence. So we'll get up over the top four to five G's there and about four to five G's here on the bottom. Probably have you fly a loop as well. We just look to aim for our uh, <laughs> smoke trail at the bottom. <laughs> yes, uh, just we gotta make it perfect. Just Otherwise I've got a marine goal. buddy that's gonna give me crap. He's in the, in the flight school down there. Okay, right okay, now. all right. Fly as well. <laughs> so pretty much just a straight pull uh, along the uh, the ladders that you'll see in the heads up display right here in the back. Okay, interesting, that, okay. And I'll help you. Uh, over and that there. tracks in such a way that knows if you're off, if you're rolling off of. Yep, yep, you'd see it in there if you've got any sort of uh, roll induced uh, with the jet. Yes. Um, so then we'll also do a half cube in where we'll execute the same thing, mm -hmm. stop right here, gain a little bit of air roll speed, proceed okay. out the other side, and then I may execute a flip turn, which is a 270 degree turn there that the solos use. Oh, I see, you do 270 to go right yep. rather than just 90 exactly. right. Exactly, yeah, it. so that's their fancy way of clearing the line. So what, are you going to say anything for that as like a 270 right or something like uh, that? Yeah, you'll hear me call it a flip turn. Understood. Yep, here comes the flip turn. 
Um, so uh, half Cuban, and then uh, we'll get into a little bit more of our Moneymaker series at the end. We'll execute a Diamond 360. So this is just a 360 degree turn, but at a constant 4G. Okay. And really all we're doing there is appreciation for the people flying uh, yes. formations. So um, the rest of the Diamond are holding holding on there at you know three feet away uh, at 4Gs for mm -hmm. a full 360 degree turn. Not a heavy G loading, but after after 360 degrees of it, you're like, okay. That's yeah, a lot, that's yeah. Good. Well, and F-16s look great when they're doing that at their show coming away. That is a fun one. Then we'll get into vertical rolls. So we'll accelerate to close to 600 miles an hour, pull straight up at about 6 Gs. It'll look and feel a lot like our takeoff, but then once we stabilize, you'll hear me say, and roll. Yes. And then we'll execute three to four aileron rolls right here in the vertical, and then recover on out, and then look for our smoke trail. Fantastic. As we depart now. Uh, then we'll get into our max turn at the end. So just to show the G performance of the aircraft and what's that, what that's like. It's just a 10 to 15 second quick pull. Uh, and we'll see what we can get out of the jet and, and how our bodies are feeling uh, today. Uh, and then we'll recover on out and talk about uh, awesome. how that G experience was overall. Yeah. Um, when we're down low flying, it'll just be about two to three Gs, but just some uh, dynamic back sure. and forth maneuvers, but you'll be ready for that. Uh, and then um, we'll be ready to just cruise it on back. Usually we just set the autopilot, let the autopilot mm -hmm. fly us home, uh, and then uh, enjoy the view uh, on the way back. When we come back to land, we will set up, uh, it sounds like we're gonna be on north flow, so if, if this is runway uh, 03 to the north, we yep. will set up for initial, right? So we'll come up, we'll break, and then I'll get all configured, set and ready to go, and then we'll swing back around uh, to land. Oh, okay, so you do do a low pass, not a touch and go, but a low pass before landing? Uh, it won't be a low pass, it'll just be our normal- uh, It's your pattern. Our normal uh, pattern at okay. 1,500 feet, like a normal overhead. Okay. Yep, so we'll just stay level you throughout that. Okay. And then bring it home, uh, back in. Then once we uh, come back into the chocks and park, uh, we'll make sure we got all our loose items stowed, everything collected, have you jump out of the, uh, or once we shut down, crew chief will come up to make sure um, that you're disconnected, able to get out of the airplane okay. And then uh, we will um, be able to gather everybody up. Uh, if it's too windy or loud or too crazy mm -hmm. from jet noise or something like that, we may bring it on inside sure. to chat. But that's uh, my chance to tell everybody um, thanks Fantastic. for their support and putting everything together uh, on your behalf. And then uh, also to talk about how you did on the flight. And then you'll also have a chance to address everybody and talk Perfect. later. And we'll have a few percent. If you like her, that uh, would be acceptable uh, relating to the video and the project we're doing. It starts off on driving that Ferrari mm -hmm. uh, spider out there. Uh, would you be open to it? Would be okay to just ride on that in the base as like a last closer for the uh, man? That would be super cool. I, we'll have to. I've got a meeting that I have to go to that. right after. I don't know if uh, if Shock or any of the other guys mentioned that, um, which bums me out because I really want to do that. But we, I, we will find a Thunderbird representative. Fair enough. Uh, that can do that. So whether it's number twelve or uh, one of our very deserving maintainers who would yes. have a really That'd be cool. good time with that. Somebody maybe if somebody with some yeah. person I they'll really reach all the young people to. Look up the Air Force. That'd be good. All yeah. Right. Maybe we can take a poll while we're out there at the jet. And see yeah. Who Whoever's most, whoever's can take it the most. Got it. Yeah. Got it. I got some ideas for Awesome. That. That's yeah. fun. <laughs> it will definitely get someone in the car. By the way, I'm completely I'm keeping my excitement level at bay for professionalism right okay. now. <laughs> good. I'm glad. So, you know, I hope, I hope you, uh, I hope you find a little fun in this. Someone we'll finds okay. has some fun together. We will. Yeah. We will. It'll good. be a good time out there. Yeah. It's it is awesome airspace. It's beautiful flying out there. And yes. And when you know, it's all the better when when you're enjoying it and having a good time too. Well, I, I, I care about uh, you know aviation history and military aviation history, and this is out here is where it's all happens. Yeah. You know, so it is got kind of the, the to geek see thing going on. Where where this base used to be and where it's come and yeah, uh, and how the cities come out to meet it too. It's it's really incredible. Um, let's see, we'll talk, we'll go jump in the trainer and talk about the remainder of these items really quick. And then in the unlikely event that you do need to be airsick, uh, it is a sensory overload. You know, like you said, you're used to lateral Gs, mm -hmm. but uh, centrifugal G is a little bit of a different sure. experience there. Um, and then actually most people like uh, can have a problem when it's like we're, after when we're they on the way back. Kind of decompress. Yeah, yeah so like, that. We're flying back, like the adrenaline mm -hmm. has kind of subsided a little bit, and you're like, oh man. So, um, obviously, even being an adrenaline junkie, like it. A little bit. It, it, the worst I ever had was a sailing ship, like in at night with clouds you couldn't see the horizon. Yeah. Underneath, you know? <laughs> that would be uh, But that, you know, um, find a horizon, find a point, you know, yep. get over it. And I'll, I'll certainly communicate anything if it warrants yep. it, but uh, yeah. 
Perfect. And then if you do have to get sick, uh, just let me know. Mm-hmm. Um, Want to make One sure mask, you get the mask it off? Out. Yeah, bag. get the mask away. Get the white bag uh, up there. Try to get everything in the bag. Of course. uh, And then tie that up. Put it in the gallon Ziploc bag because that Mm -hmm. one could get snagged on anything. And it's like one uh, millimeter thick. Uh, And then secure the Ziploc bag back under your elastic band or in your pocket uh, on that one. It is okay if you want to take some pictures while we're up Mm -hmm. there. Um, You should have touch-sensitive gloves. uh, So it should work. When are the appropriate times for that? And is there anything classified in the jet I shouldn't show? Exactly. So uh, no pictures inside the airplane, just mm-hmm. pictures outside the okay. airplane. And so then, none of the instruments or panels? Right. Okay. Yep. And then um, none of it's classified, but mm-hmm. we just Perfect. try to not uh, take okay. pictures on the inside. And then um, driving to and from the airspace mm-hmm. is probably good. straight level and chill. It's straight and level. And then while we're doing some of the low-level stuff, okay. uh, if you want to try there, but then you wouldn't really be enjoying it, I guess, if you're taking pictures. Uh, but you can get a couple photos there. But bottom line, let me know when you have... I'll let you know preemptively, like, hey, this should be a good time yes. to take some p- photos. You always want to have two hands on your phone. Yes, indeed. Usually securing it in your uh, upper chest pocket's the best place for it. And then if you were to inadvertently drop the phone, let me know because we, we have to come back. Yeah. So that is the risk kind of taking okay. pictures there. Well, I, uh, I completely understand that and uh, we'll take the precautions and the presence of mind so that it doesn't happen. All right. And in, in, in that regard, we should just do that on the way back. That's probably the best time. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, on the way back. Rather than yeah. risk anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you can still get all the good selfies. You got. I may good forget, good. though, so you might have to remind okay, me. Okay, I will. Like, yeah. I will. <laughs> and you have the GoPro going the whole time, right? True. So, I just, the way uh, I look at it and telling the story, the uh, iPhone ten does fantastic video yeah. and uh, just more footage tells the story better. Perfect. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So. We'll make that happen. Uh, cool. Any questions about any of the profile, anything we talked about, or anything from any of the training you've had? No, we are going to... Let me ask you this. So you mentioned about the potential of getting out ahead of the formation or behind. Um, in either case, will we still do the same takeoff maneuver you mentioned? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah we wouldn't. We, we wouldn't take off before them. Mm-hmm. If we get out there before them, mm-hmm. it would just be to get you in the seat, and we'd actually start up with them. Okay. Yeah, Fair enough. Which. Uh, and we'll tail the diamond then. Let's see. They're taking off. They step in. But we'll let's run outside into the trainer and the hangar and finish that portion, and then we'll see how close we are to ready to go. Uh, obviously the throttle, right? So you're used to that forward and back. Right. Uh, and then we've got the gear handle. You'll see that go up and down. The ejection seat arming lever right here. We'll talk about that guy. That, yeah, that's that's a detent for afterburner. Yep, forward. Yeah, this one's a little, little yeah, we'll over here. But uh, we'll talk about the ejection uh, yes. arming lever. We'll talk about your uh, comm panel, which is a little different, but okay. uh, close enough um, to be able to look at in here. The ejection handle, yes. vent, the stick over here, mm-hmm. so only moves. Oh, I two, see it is close. Only moves you do have this leg layers. move here, but you've got the you got the, uh, the G suit. Understood. And so it's difficult to feel when you're putting pressure on it. So we'll make sure the rudder pedals are out of your way. Okay. You can rest your feet on them, but but no, uh, I know what you mean. So you to guys can move them. those forward, no problem. Yeah, yeah, is there can. any heel stopper or not? No, no. Okay, then what I'll probably do is I'll just probably just, you just push put my out, legs just... on the side of the wall. Yep. We'll push them out together, and then I can just put yeah. my feet against the side yep. of the wall. Yep, you'll pull on this handle right okay. here, and then you'll push those out with your toes as far as you can. And yes. Then, uh, and then you should be good. Let's see. Your armrests won't be up in there, so... Oh, I see. That would be so that. you can... Yeah, yeah. That, no one uses the front one. Uh, that's in there. There's another one in the back. You see. <laughs> Um, oh, and then we'll talk about the oxygen regulator, the panel with the different colors. Yeah, he mentioned that. That's the, the back, emergency right? one. Yep. They both they start all down, right? Uh, they start in the normal position, so middle. middle, and then I didn't uh, know they had three positions. And then down, that one's is down normal, and then down, and then that'll it's be off. forward and on. This but one? It'll, it'll be all the way forward in what's called the PBG position. It's not listed on that. Okay, that this the green one. Yeah, it'll be all the way forward. This was 100 percent oxygen. Yep. Mentioned. Okay. And that panel will be turned 90 degrees. But in the same location? In the same location. Understood. But it'll be turned and the levers will go forward and back okay. relative to your What was access. the, uh, he mentioned the uh, the code if, if for some reason to put them all forward? And gain load. It, that is a gain yeah, load. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. All right, so starting back over here, uh, throttle, you know, you put your left hand on, it, it's pretty smooth forward and back. I'll talk yes. about when you can uh, mess with can the Can you show throttle. this cockpit? Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, 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 yes, okay. yes. Yeah. So uh, you don't need to worry about any of the buttons or switches, um, the hands-on uh, buttons there. So, comm panel over here, we uh, you'll see the uh, hot mic switch, so in the off position, 
obviously we're not talking to each other. Hot mic is a live intercom between the two of us. Okay. So, um, when you have to speak with somebody, does that automatically cut me out? No, you could talk at the same time. Okay, so, so. I just need to realize when you're doing yeah, business. Yeah, if you do hear, up. yeah, I'll try to tell you if I'm if I'm making a radio call Perfect. or if you hear my voice. You'll have your radios kind of at a mid level, so they're not too loud, but you may hear them and just exactly know that I'm that I'm trying to talk to them. But usually they're quick radio calls, and I'll be right back to Understood. talk to you. Understood. If for some reason you want me to dial down my mic, or if I need to go up or down on the ears, what? Uh... Uh, I control my my intercom volume. Okay. And same thing. Yours will be full up all the way. You need it full up to be able to because hear. Because I got the earplugs. Yeah. Understood. So um, that's always make sure that that stays full up. Sometimes your G suit hose can catch on this and move it to off. You okay. should always be able to hear. Where does yourself. the G hose? Suit. Right Where does here, it and then right straight back. Okay, yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you can't hear yourself, yes. then first step is to look over here and check this switch and make sure you're in hot mic. Right. Uh, for you, it's actually positioned over here in the back seat, really close enough. Okay, so the, this will be here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next thing is the uh, injection seat arming lever. So this yes. mechanically enables the seat I uh, to, be, probably to pulls be live. The pin. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Pulling that pulls the pin and makes the, the handle active. So that's the armed position, and then you can put it up, and that's that the safe position. That way we get back to the ramp and put it up. Yeah, yep. So pre-takeoff, before we get on the runway, I'll say, okay, Casey, with your left hand, go ahead and arm up your seat by yes. moving the lever to the down position. It's much more spring-loaded in the jet, so be careful, it'll snap down. Understood. Don't catch your finger underneath that right. lever. I'll probably put hands in this so it doesn't exactly. snap down and beat up the metal. And then after we clear the runway or we're at a safe taxi speed after landing, I'll have you safe yes. up your seat. That, of course, enables the ejection seat, uh, uh, the actual ejection um, handle. Yes. So conveniently and inconveniently located, right? It's, it's not like an oh crap handle. Uh, don't so don't grab the closest thing you see. If no, you're no. Like, what am I doing? I don't need that. Um, so it's not fragile or anything. 25 yes. pound pull force required. So if you just tap it, you're not going to eject. I'm just not going to touch it. want to respect the handle. Yeah. Yeah. Only touch that if we're talking about uh, ejection. Right. We'll come back to a few things on that. This will have a little actual air displacer in here. It's not just open like that, but that's your air vent. Um, is it uh, adjustable in direction or you turn something? Yep. Yeah, it's just like a standard okay. uh, uh, conical air vent. So you just open it up. Shoot it at the neck or something. Exactly. Yep, yeah. right underneath your helmet's usually uh, good for that. Uh, over on the right, we talked about stick and washing interference on yes. that. If you feel the jet going, that's because I'm bumping that's it. That's probably because you might be hitting yeah. the well. And you feel know. free to give it a grab. Yeah, I can override your input on the stick, okay. uh, just not on the rudder pedals. Okay. But I'll let you know. Yep, when you do get a chance to put your uh, your hands on the controls there, okay. um, again, you don't have to worry about it. When, when you typically or... fly, do you fly with like <laughs> good trigger discipline? Yeah, yeah, like this, yeah, you know yeah what pretty I mean? much. Yeah, yep. okay. Yep. And then the switch located outboard on the on the right yes. hand side there. Yeah, again, this will be out of the way. Okay. Um, will I bother having either the rest that, up? This one will be down. Okay, so that one I can utilize. Down. Okay. Yep. It's comfortable. So at that switch right there is the seat adjust adjustment switch. It's either up or down, and the lap belts, everything attached to the seat, so I don't have to worry about readjusting belts right. or straps. That's okay. right, yep. So once we have power on the airplane, Understood. I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, so with the helmet on my head, this is about the, the back position. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then, just like you talked about, you can move the seat up and down uh, right after we start up. Yes. I'll let you know. I assume I don't have line of sight straight level for the back seat. Well, okay, yeah. fair enough. It's a little different. Yep. And then we already talked about the uh, oxygen regulator back there. Yes. So during one of our ground checks, I'll ask you to move the white switch to the, it'll be forward, Four, to yeah. the forward or 100% position. So you move that, and then I'll have you move it back to normal, which is the bottom position. I imagine the details in the real one are much better. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, if I ever tell you to gang load the regulator, then uh, uh, you move all the I'll give you maximum positive oxygen. So to talk through some abnormal type procedures, if we need to uh, get out of the aircraft on the ground because there's a problem, like it caught on fire during romp or something yes. like that, you'll hear me say egress, egress, egress. So that means safely but expeditiously we need to get out of the airplane. I understand. First thing we want to do, worst case, is verify that our seat is safe. So okay. if we were in takeoff position and running it up, our seat would be hot. Yes. So we want to safe our seats so we don't inadvertently eject ourselves while we're trying to get out of the airplane. So seat safe. Yes. And then you need to disconnect the four things that are holding you to the seat, all right? Okay. So I'll go through this and I'll say it at least one time after I'm done with it, but seat safe, belt, yes. so your seat belt, kit, the two green survival kit buckles that you practice with right here. Yes. So kit, harness, the two-way uh, harness up here, boom, boom, watch your thumbs not to pinch them there. Mm -hmm. And then your G-suit over here, reach over with two hands, just kind of break the connection and then pull it. So, Lap out here. Yep. Then kit. 
kit. Yep, belt, kit, belt, kit, harness, G-suit, G-suit, seat safe. Okay. Belt, kit, harness, G-suit. Understood. When uh, we come out, the harness will be in the plane rather than wearing it. When you get in, is that right? Uh, you will put it on out there and wear it into the airplane. If we were egressing fast. And then, uh, and then we'll run away to a safe distance, wash out emergency <laughs> vehicles. If we have to abort our takeoff for any reason, um, we've got cables on the runway uh, that I can use the tail hook for. The and then if we were to like uh, pop a tire or something, use directional control and it looks like we're gonna go off the runway uh, at higher than like a car highway speed, not the speed you're used to driving, but um, you know, greater than 60 miles an sure. hour. It's safer for us to eject really? than, to, than okay. to ride our tricycle non so it is safe and possible, and the jet is capable of supporting ejection uh, while we're still That's on the ground. Yeah, because it gets uh, you up high enough that you can yep. deploy. So just if you hear me saying things like, and under that to eject, highly unlikely circumstance, other than getting myself in a good position, I shouldn't have to do squat. Right. Okay. And we'll talk about a few, we'll talk about a few more things. In a minute. Yep. I can phrase uh, that. Bird strike uh, type potential down low. Uh, we will be doing a little bit of cruising around down low. Um, not expecting a whole lot of birds based on the forecast for today. Um, but in the event that we were to take a bird, it were to penetrate the canopy and possibly incapacitate me in the front seat. Uh, you've got flying experience, so you've got the wherewithal to um, understand a bad situation. But if if we get into a spot where I'm we're not talking, mm -hmm. and that I'm clearly not flying. The jet's the not doing anything. You're, you're like, we're it's that just quiet moment going. Okay. And you're like, Miami, hey, dude, what's going on? You know, and like, no response, and I'm yes. not flying. Take control of the airplane, wings level, climb, get away from the ground. Understood. Buy us some more time to assess and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, if that continues, i.e., like, you still can't talk to me, and I don't take control of the airplane then you can fly yourself into a good position uh, to prepare to eject. Understood. And you will eject both of us. Um, right. So find will I have radio that looks... comm in that circumstance? You would, yep. Yeah, okay. if you needed to use the radio, it's, you, you pull up on that switch. With your, your pull up on you. this trigger switch yep. here. Yeah. yeah, yep. you pull up on that, and you would talk to uh, the agency. Fair enough. Joshua approaches right. we were talking to. Keeping the plane flying and then talking calmly yep. is the first priority. Yep, yep. We'll and then finding something that looks like a populated area where we would be rescued. And oh, then, short, and then sooner than later plane. without putting a plane somewhere. Else. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but if I'm flying or if we're talking, then you don't have to worry about of course. any of those. So only that one situation. If we get smoke or fumes in the cockpit, it'll be dark. It'll smell acrid, like, you know, electrical, yes. you know, burning. Um, that's one of the times I may say to um, gang load the regulator. And then also if you're feeling any sort of physiological symptoms, things like numbness, tingling, headache, can't see colors, yeah, that may indicate a lack uh, of oxygen or a problem with the oxygen system. Okay. We'll attempt to gang load uh, on that. If that doesn't fix it, then you'll pull this little green ring right here. All right, we'll disconnect, oh, we'll disconnect the green oxygen hose from your uh, connector right here. Okay. So disconnect green and then pull green and that will give you eight to 12 minutes of that's on the small emergency the tank. Yep, this is Understood. Yep, this right so at the gang loading, if the main oxygen system is having an issue, yeah. then I can uh, yank the main one and pull this. Yep, yep. And we'll talk about all that if it's an issue. Because it probably will be affecting both of us. Yes. Since we're both breathing the same oxygen. If, uh, and then on that note, at the altitudes we'll be at today, the air in the jet is perfectly safe to breathe. Yes. Right? So if, if you're having trouble breathing, if you just need to get the mask down, like, it's totally fine. We want your mask up so it doesn't hit you in the face and stuff like that, but you don't need that for any you can pop uh, one. portion of the breathing uh, today.
Uh, in the unlikely event we do need to eject from the airplane while we're airborne, we will talk about ejection, we will run the ejection checklist, talk about when and how we're going to eject, get into a good ejection body position, but nowhere when we're just saying the word eject, uh, worry about touching the ejection Correct. handle or be ready to go. So then I'll say, okay Casey, uh, we're getting ready to eject, get into a good ejection body position. All right, so just like your G-strain position that you did, uh, you want your legs You'd be pulling your legs in. Uh, no, you actually no. want them right down Canyon. the wheel wells like that, and then it'll... It gets you out of the... Yep. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really. Yep. And okay. then you want to make sure you get your head back, mm -hmm. your chin tucked in as much as you can, elbows tucked in as much as you can, and then grab the handle. I see. We're talking about ejection uh, with two hands right there on either side, which yes. is fine. And then the command to eject will be bailout, bailout, bailout. At right. which point I am actually pulling? Yep, on the third okay. bailout, we'll both pull together. Okay. It'll is that a redundancy us. type of thing, or is it because I, I physically have to pull it to eject? Uh, it's a redundancy type of thing. E if either one of us pull the handle, both of us eject, I understand. and it sequences us appropriately. Okay. Um, so we don't have a Top Gun Goose type uh, issue there. Correct. So, um, it'll sequence us, and then after you have participated in the ejection portion there, uh, then everything is automatic when you load the train. Um, however, at, because of the terrain that we're flying in, if we did have to eject out in the airspace, once you're separated from the aircraft, and you're still, you're still in the seat, you're like, all right, this is happening, you can reach down with your right hand, you can pull up on this handle right there, mm -hmm. and then that will continue your uh, man seat separation uh, manual. Oh yes, this is the handle you're yeah. speaking of. Yeah. In case the seat does not separate. But yeah, in case That's the seat doesn't is. separate, or because of the terrain where we're flying today, you can just pull that as soon as we're separated from the airplane. Just assume, yeah. okay. Yeah. Is that assuming, what was it, the, uh, support, no. 10,000 foot AGL, it doesn't deploy until then, something like that? Right, so it, between 16 and 14,000 feet okay. is where it will, but since we'll be rough below 10,000 feet AGL, most of it will This is if it doesn't, it should, yep. but if it doesn't, yank the seat. Exactly, okay. yep, that will separate you and then get your chute and then your training picks up. Uh, we talked about the intercom between the two of us. The troubleshooting techniques on that are pretty straightforward. If you can't hear yourself, yes. then you've got a problem obviously with your mic. So first thing is to check the black communications cord that you're going to have right here. The 1980s uh, DJ headphone plug there, right? So I the big one, yeah. check that out and then uh, maybe disconnect, reconnect. And the then, tiny one on the hey, you hear me? Yes. And then if that doesn't work, then over here, make sure that you're in hot mic. Um, if you can hear yourself, but you can't hear me, okay. then it's likely the intercom volume, but that shouldn't move once we set it to full up. Okay. Uh, and then uh, if we've tried all those steps and we still can't get good comms between the two of us, it may be your mic uh, in your mask. Yes. Uh, you, you can pull your mask down and reach in and kind of mess with it. Yeah, a little I'm, bit. I'm actually familiar with that mic. But um, uh, if that, that last step doesn't work, uh, Hopefully you're hearing me, and I'll be like, Casey, I can't hear you or whatever. All right, man, just let me know you're okay. I'll right. wave my hands like this. Understood. I'll look back, get a thumbs up from you. That means you're good, but we can't talk, so we'll just plan to come back at that point. Okay. Um, if I have any sort of an in-flight emergency, a problem with the jet, hydraulic, oil, electrical, anything like that, you may um, hear me say things like I'm referencing the checklist, we have to go home, I'm de declaring an emergency, things yes. like that. Those are all to prioritize safety, of course, and then uh, my main priority is to get you and I and the jet home safely. So um, if you see anything blatant wrong, you know, the right wing is on fire, the left wing is missing, something yes. like that, well, let me know. I think Otherwise, you feel that, but I yeah, I will not, be observant. I may not be able to get uh, back to you, or I will as soon as I can, updates yes. uh, on the status of the jet. Um, we'll confirm that, yeah, so again, if you ever have a problem, don't feel like you have to keep that mask on. If you can't breathe for some reason, just take the mask off. Okay. And we talk about it. Sure, understood. Cool. Any questions about anything inside the jet? No, this is safety, this is armed, you'll apprise me of that, you don't just flip it. This is radio if need be, but unlikely. Uh, this will be down, watch your leg. Um, leave that the hell alone. <laughs> and this is to adjust later when need be. We've got the audio intercom. My intercom will be all the way up. If there's an issue I can't hear you, check the, uh, the connection first, the physical connection, um, then the switch, your intercom. Um, obviously, communicate via hand signals if there's any issues there. We went over uh, some emergency type procedures and such, which we'll walk through relating ejection on double redundancy, getting in a good position, and you swear my legs will come out of it and I don't yes. have to go like that because then that would probably break my femur. Yes. Um, and then lastly, the oxygen regulator. The, uh, be normal on red, left, 
down on white, forward on green. If you say uh, gang load, all forward, and that one will be a 90 degree angle on the inline on the jet. That's I think that's it. pretty much it. I think you got it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Ready so, to rock. Ready? <laughs> yeah, come on out.